Google is a search engine. Uh, it allows us to search the web. And it's also a company that really focuses on innovative technologies and organizing the world's information. I'm trying to sleep. I lost count of sheep. My mind is racing faster every minute. When we say all the world's information, we really do mean all. We've focused primarily to date on web pages, but now our efforts are expanding into things like books, um, printed materials that would be here in library, into videos, uh, into a lot of different modes and mediums that we think, where we think we can help people organize information. The internet and the World Wide Web have become part of our public and private lives. They now have over a billion users. Millions of pages of information from all over the world are available in our homes at the click of a mouse. How did it happen? Vint Cerf is one of the Internet's founders. In 2005, he started work at Google. You've been named the father of the Internet. Yes, I've been named the father of the internet, but it's not a, it's not accurate. Uh, Bob Kahn uh, and I did the design work in 1973. He really initiated the program at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And so it's fair to say that the two of us uh, had the primary involvement in the creation of the uh, internet's design. But after our first paper was published in 1974, there were uh, just thousands of people involved in, in making this actually happen. Could you ever foresee at that time that the internet would take such a flight? The technologies that we are uh, very commonly familiar with today were visible to us in the course of this work. But could we have foreseen the side effect of a billion people having access to this facility, pouring information into this. No, we couldn't see that. Uh, people began to learn very quickly how to compose information that could be put into the World Wide Web. And now the question is, how do I find it? Companies like Google and others that have found ways to index the entire Internet contribute to the utility of all that information going into the system. In the mid-1990s, many search engines were launched to help users find information on the internet. About this time, two young men enrolled at Stanford University, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. While the internet bubble burst around them and one company after another folded, they were developing the ultimate search engine. In 1999, with a starting capital of $100,000, they founded Google. When the company went public in 2004, they became overnight billionaires. And Google, with over 6,700 employees, became the world's fastest growing internet company. Larry and Sergey, they didn't actually want to start a company. They wanted to sell their search engine technology to an existing company. And they went around to everyone and everyone said, hmm, well, our search is at least 80% as good as the next person's. Isn't that good enough? And Larry and Sergey said, you know, no. It turns out that last 20% really does matter. And the fact that our search is noticeably better than everyone else's will make a big difference. Two students who wanted to make the best search engine. That's how Google started. But how does such a search engine work? What is behind that screen? Right, a ton of algorithms that determine what we show and when we show it. Uh, so for example, if you were to do a query on the keyword flowers, you would see that the page pulls up. Uh, one thing that's important about this, it pulls up very quickly. So that's always been um, a core thing of Google. We want to provide the best user experience. And if you have to wait for your search results a couple of seconds, that's not a good experience. So page loads very quickly. And then as you can see, we have sort of two areas on the page. We have the organic search results, which you will see on the left-hand left, left -hand side. And then you have all of your advertising, which you will see as uh, sometimes the top results on the page. These are clearly marked 
in a different color, and then we also have them on the right-hand side of the page. For the organic results, mm -hmm. the guy who ends up first is happiest of all, I take. Obviously. So uh, how does PageRank work? How does he get there? The way that PageRank works is it looks at incoming links into websites. Um, so essentially the idea is that if somebody has a website, say about flowers, and their website has become very, uh, has become an authority on the subject, then it's likely that other people will have links pointing to that website because they feel there's a lot of value on that website and there's something interesting there, so they make links to it. And by looking at all of these links coming in, um, we can then determine how valuable that page is. Now what we also do is we look at where did these links come from. For example, if somebody had a link from the New York Times.com to a website, then we understand that the New York Times is more respectable than maybe my personal website. So that has a bigger boost in the way that your uh, page will be ranked in the organic results. The question is, how is the choice made to rank the New York Times higher than a personal website, for instance? There are um, mechanisms that we and others use to try to assess which information is thought to be the most relevant. Uh, after all, the party is doing the search wants information which is most relevant to the specific terms that have been used in the search query. Relevance in our world, in part, is conferred by the uh, by knowing how many websites are pointing to a particular place. The more that point to a place with a, a hyperlink, the more likely it is that that must be important information. So then you start ranking the importance of the places that are pointing by trying to see how, how many places point to them. Uh, it's more complicated than that, but uh, if we get too much deeper into this, it's getting into the trade secrets of Google, which I don't want to do. Uh, so we're, we're confronted with um, this huge mass of information. Uh, we try to figure out what's relevant based on these various hints. But in the end, uh, each of us has to decide for himself what our reaction is to this information. In 2005, Google had a gross turnover of 6.1 billion US dollars and a net profit of one and a half billion. 